um, with Are You Fruitful? Are You Fruitful? And uh, we're going to hang out primarily in Galatians chapter 5. So if, you're ha- if you have your Bibles, please feel free to turn into Galatians chapter 5. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 26. And uh, as you guys know, <laughs> I'm sure as you guys know, is, is I read a whole bunch of different versions of the Bible. And, uh, and today, today I, this is the first time I've ever uh, read or, or tried to teach out of this one. This is, this is called the Complete Jewish Study Bible, Insights for Jews and Christians. And while we're putting this together, I mean, my kitchen table, <laughs> it looks like a bomb went off. You would have thought I was a college kid or something with all these books open, uh, not necessarily for cross-references, but really, when you read all these different versions, you know, in Bibles from different times, it just creates a bigger picture, like a, a, a greater depth, and, and it was really cool, and, and uh, some of the stuff that this one said, said really stood out to me, so this is what I'm going to be reading out of. Uh, so, here we go, Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 26. It says, For brothers, you were called to be free. Only do not let that freedom become an excuse for allowing your old nature to have its way. Instead, serve one another in love. For the whole Torah is summed up in this one sentence, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on snapping at each other and tearing each other into pieces, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. What I am saying is this, run your lives by the Spirit. Then you will not do what your old nature wants. For the old nature wants what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit wants what is contrary to the old nature. These oppose each other so that you find yourselves unable to carry out your good intentions. But if you are led by the spirit, then you are not in subjection to the system that results from perverting the Torah into legalism. And it is perfectly evident that the old nature It is, I'm sorry, it is perfectly evident what the old nature does. It expresses itself in sexual immorality, impurity, indecency, involvement with the occult and with drugs, in feuding, fighting, becoming jealous and getting angry, in selfish ambition, factionalism, intrigue, envy, in drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you now as I have warned you before. Those who do such things will have no share in the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. Nothing in the Torah stands against such things. Moreover, those who belong to Messiah, Yeshua, have put their old nature to death on the stake, along with its passions and its desires. Since it is through the Spirit that we have life, let it also be through the Spirit that we order our lives day by day. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Um, within the context of what we just read, I'd like to pose the question to everybody out here, okay? Are you fruitful? Very simple. Are you fruitful? Are you producing fruit with what this, uh, these scriptures say, the fruit of the Spirit? Are you, producing, are you producing love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? Um, with that being said, everybody has this cool little piece of paper. Does anybody not have this cool little piece of paper? Oh, here, I have extras. Okay, so I want everybody to take just a few minutes. There is an ink pen in the seat back in front of you, and I want you guys to take a quick little test, okay? Um, Each one of these fruits have a number by them, 1 through 10, Uh, 1 being a low scale, 10 being a high scale. If you do not have a pen in your seat back in front of you, we will get one to you. Um, If you would raise your hand, Lonnie's looking to pass out ink pens. Okay, so take just a few moments and mark on uh, 
on this love here. How well do you love on a scale of 1 to 10? 1 being low, 10 being high. I'll be filling mine out right here. And be honest, you know. <laughs> be honest. Yeah, right? 11. <laughs> Jesse loves at 11 scale. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So uh, love, you know, 1 through 10. Joy, 1 through 10. Hmm. Okay, let's move down here to peace. On a scale of 1 to 10, how often do you stay in peace? Then uh, patience. Patience. How patient are you with other people? Um, kindness. Let's move on here to kindness. How kind are you uh, to humanity? <laughs> how kind are you to humanity? Um, good. How good are you? How good are you? How bad are you? In the sense of, I guess, morality or goodness, how good are you? All right, we'll move to faithfulness. How faithful are you? How faithful are you to your commitments? When you say something, do you follow through with the things that you say you're going to do? Gentleness. How gentle are you with your brothers and sisters and even with your not brothers and sisters? How gentle are you? <laughs> and then the last one, uh, which we are all magnificent at, self-control. On a scale of 1 to 10, how well do you operate in self-control? All right. Now, uh, I know since most of y'all in here scored a perfect 10 out of, 10 out of 7, 1, 2, 3, 10 out of 9, oh my gosh, i got to get my stuff together. Since everybody got a perfect 10, now I want you to take that piece of paper and write your name on it. Write your name on it. You guys didn't know you were coming to school today, huh? <laughs> so everybody wrote their name on their piece of paper. Now I want you to take that piece of paper and I want you to give it to your spouse. I want you to give that piece of paper to your spouse or to your friend or to your neighbor, a close, your son, your daughter, um, a relative, uh, or a best buddy, or even your enemy. <laughs> Somebody take that piece of paper and give it to a friend or a spouse. Are we doing this? You're amazing. All right, now, now I want you to take the test. We're going to take this test again, and we're not going to take it based on, on the name that's... Uh, we're not going to take it based on us. We're going to take it based on the name on the paper. So now, I am going to take this same test for my brother, Nathan Briggs. What, how, much, uh, how much love do I think that he functions out of? From an outsider looking in, how do I perceive how well he loves on a scale of 1 to 10? All right, how joyful is my brother? When, when I see Nathan and I think about the joy in his life, how joyful is he? When I think about Nathan in peace, how, how, how do I score him, or for lack of better terms, Judge his ability to stay within peace. Um, <laughs> patience. <laughs> patience, another one of those great ones. Uh, how, how patient do I think Nathan is? All right. Kindness. How kind do I think my brother is? Or my wife, or my sister, or my husband? Oh, it's a trick. <laughs> Uh, how good, how good do I think that Nathan is? You know, it, this, this, we, might, we might be breaking you into marriage class. That is a good possibility. Uh, how faithful do I think Nathan is? How gentle do I think that he is? And how much self-control do I think that he has? Now everybody give the piece of paper back to the person that it come from. All right. Now, um, now, I want you to review the answers that your spouse or your friend or your relative or your son or your daughter has given you. Man, Nathan thinks I'm a superstar. 
<laughs> oh, wow. So there's a couple of things I want you guys to look at real quick. Um, of course, how does your spouse see you? And uh, I got a feeling um, most of us see ourselves in maybe just a little bit of a negative-er. Is that even a word? Most of us see ourselves in a light that's a little less dim than how other people see us. Um, <laughs> so uh, w- with all of that being said, if, if anybody did get a 10 out of 10, can I see your hand? Oh, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. Uh, he can tutor. He's taken a tutoring, tutoring on as a career now to help all of us. So it uh, looks like all I'm saying here is if you have taken this test, it looks like we all have a little bit of work to do. Now, this is a good litmus, lit, litmus test to see where we are in some areas that we need to work on. So the next question is, how do we become more fruitful in the areas where we need growth? Think about that. Think about that question. How, how can I become more fruitful in the areas that I need growth? I'll just be brutally honest. Um, my lowest score was on patience for me. I scored myself at a two on patience. I am about as impatient as you can get when I see something that I want. I go for it with all that I am. I feel like the Kool-Aid man. Do any of you guys remember the Kool-Aid man who busts through the wall <laughs> to get what he wanted? Um, that's something that I really need to work on. So how can I work on that? How can I work on that? Well, that's easy. You know, uh, we, just, we just love our friends and our family and our enemies better. We just love them better. Or uh, maybe we could be a little more joyful. That's something that I marked myself pretty low in also. I usually am not very joyful, but I'm an excellent grump. If grumpiness was one of the fruits of the Spirit, I would get an 11, as Jesse would say it. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe I should stay in peace. Maybe I could work on staying in peace during some frustrating times or be a little more patient with the guy driving so slow in front of me when I got somewhere to be. <laughs> when I'm uh, you know, late to an appointment because I didn't leave when I should have, if that guy would get out of my way, maybe I should just offer a little more patience to him. Maybe I could show a little more kindness to the person being rude or inconsiderate. Maybe I can uh, try a little harder to be a good person. Try a little harder to be a good person. Uh, maybe we could be more faithful to our commitments. I could work on that one as well. I, I hate it when I make a commitment and then I can't keep it, and then I feel... Uh, embarrassed, uh, shameful, uh, you know what I mean? I just wish I wouldn't have never told him I would have shown up instead of telling him I'll be there and then not be able to make it. Uh, you know, when I don't always agree with a friend that knows everything, maybe I could show some humility and, and allow them to be right. That's something else that I struggle with. <laughs> the Lord made me right, don't you know? Or maybe we could ex- exercise that self-control when, uh, when my child or even some of their friends sometimes get a little bit of smart mouth. Maybe I could exercise self-control instead of giving her a black eye. I would never, I shouldn't say I would never, but I've, I have never given her a black eye. <laughs> so, uh, anywho, if, if you listen to some of those statements about how we could work on uh, developing our uh, fruit of the Spirit, um... Those are all works. Everything I just said is a work. Everything I just said was something that I could do to develop something that I cannot develop. Okay? Um, So now we're going to go back through what we opened up with, Galatians 5. Again, we're going to hang out um, in, in, in Scriptures 13 through 26. Okay? And I feel like the Lord has laid some awesome stuff in here if we just slow down just a little bit. Um, Again, that whole patience thing, I've learned a lot in reading um, God's Word and slowing down. Another big key in in me interpreting the Scriptures or, or me getting revelation from God is put I put myself in the story, which might sound crazy, But like when I read the book of Ezekiel, I read it as if I'm Ezekiel. You know, when I read the book of James, I read it as if I'm James. 
And, and when you put yourself in that first person point of view as you're reading, it has a different contextual meaning and seems to, uh, the Lord breathes on it a lot. And, uh, you know, I've, I've tried to put myself, you know, in the position of the Philistines. That's never no fun. <laughs> but uh, it's great to be in the position of David. <laughs> so, uh, anywho, verse 13, okay? For brothers, you were called to be free. Only do not let that freedom become an excuse for allowing your old nature to have its way. Instead, serve one another in love. 14. For the whole of the Torah is summed up in this one sentence. Love your neighbor as yourself. I love how Paul uses the letter of the law to preach freedom. Are you catching that? So, uh, if uh, you guys can, if you want to, you don't have to, but uh, he's actually referencing Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. I'm going to turn over there right quick. All right, Leviticus verse 19, verse 18. This is what it says. Don't take vengeance on or bear a grudge against any of your people. Rather, love your neighbor as yourself. For I am Adonai. So I think that it is amazing how he takes something um, and, and he uses it against itself. Because I'm, I'm learning that that in actuality, sin has taken something that was intended for good and tricked us into using it for legalism. You know what I mean? Do good, get good. Do bad, get bad. You get what I'm saying? And that's, that's where I was pointing with the test on how do we uh, develop the fruit of the Spirit. You know what? It sounds totally good. We can get wrapped up and enslaved in bondage by trying to earn these things, by trying to make ourselves better, by exercising uh, restraint, um, I don't even know, grace. You know, we, we try to do things out of our own power, and eventually my strength, I'm learning, uh, isn't near as strong as I thought it was. And so I run out of these things, I run out of this strength in order to uphold myself to this fruitful uh, development. Something else uh, that, that Paul talks about is Romans, he talks about the same thing in Romans 13, uh, verses 8 through 10. And I'll turn over there real quick. I thought I had this one marked, but I guess I didn't, but that's okay. Uh, Romans 13, 8 through 10. Romans 13, 8 through 10, it says, Don't owe anyone anything except love one another. For whoever loves his fellow human being has fulfilled the Torah. For the commandments, don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't covet, and any others are summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not harm. Love does do not. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fullness of the Torah. Love your neighbor as yourself. I struggle with that. Now, like, <laughs> my neighbor or all of the, everybody in here, not a problem. I love everybody in here. I, 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 even if I don't know you, um, it's not hard. I feel like you go to church, I go to church. You love Jesus, I love Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That's not that difficult for me. But, uh... But other humans, <laughs> I might struggle with that just a little bit. Um, I don't always see all of humanity through the eyes of, of the Father. I don't always see the eyes. I don't always see humanity with the eyes of, of Jesus or, or Yeshua with his love, his grace, his compassion. You know, almost, I, I forget the numbers, it was in the low uh, 90 percentile of the miracles that Jesus did were done out of compassion. He's seen a need. And even when they didn't ask it, out of the compassion of his heart, he fulfilled that need. That is loving your neighbor. How many times do I see a need and I go right by the need because I'm too busy, because I got somewhere to be, because I don't think they're really in need. They're trying to work the system to get something for free. Um, it's just pretty wild. And then also in James 1.27, James chapter 1, verse 27, it says the religion, 
the religious observance that God the Father considers pure and faultless is this, to care for the orphans and the widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being contaminated by the world. Do we care for the orphans and the widows? I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm just asking myself. (laughs) I'm pretty selfish, you know. I live nice. I always have a full belly. You know, there's gasoline in my car. Um, I have clothes to wear. Feed my cat and my dog. Actually, my dog passed. So I feed my cat and my son's dogs. (laughs) But do I take care of the orphan and the widow? Do I take care of those that cannot take care of themselves? Hmm. Hmm. Those three passages, actually those four, you know, that we just uh, read, you know, Galatians 14, love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19, you know, do no harm to your brother, love your neighbor as yourself. Romans 13, Paul is teaching, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And then even James is talking about love the orphan and the widows. This is the essence or the spirit of God's law. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Jesus says it in Matthew 7, 12. I have a whole bunch of these were not marked. Like, (laughs) bear with me, guys. It's okay. I I know right where it's at. (laughs) Matthew 7, 12. It says, always treat others as you would like them to treat you. That sums up the teaching of the Torah and the prophets. <laughs> That's wild. Let's go to uh, number 15. Verse number 15, Galatians number 15. I know, it, I know it's just me, Galatians 5, verse 15. I know it's me, none of y'all do this. I don't want to put this on any of y'all out there. This is me speaking directly to me, number 15. But if you go on snapping at each other and tearing each other into pieces, watch out, for you will be destroyed by each other. Huh. I mean, that doesn't even say that Satan will destroy you. That says, I will destroy you and you will destroy me. Isn't that crazy? Like I said, I know you guys don't do that. You are amazing. But I have this horrible thing inside of me that wants to be right at the cost of my brothers and sisters. That humility... Uh, that self-control that I try to develop on my own (laughs) is a little lacking. It is a little lacking. It just blows me away that if you slow down and read that, it says, you know, it isn't necessarily the evil one that will destroy you, but we actually as brothers and sisters can destroy one another if we keep on, you know, attitude and, you know... (laughs) Having to prove my point consistently over and over and over. Where's the grace? Where's the love? Where's the humility? When am I going to learn to walk away from an argument for the sake of the salvation of our friendship? When am I going to learn to walk away from an argument for the sake of love, for the greater good? Not understanding that if, if, uh, if, if Susie and I have a butting of heads and we decide to just go our own ways, that other people suffer that my daughter suffers the consequence of my negligence and her negligence. How, how, how much so is, does that fit, you know, in this house? Because whether you know it or not, you guys are part of the body of Christ. You're part of the body of Christ. And when I get an attitude and run away because nobody wants to listen or nobody, uh, okay, when I get an attitude and I run away because I'm struggling to convey what the Lord is sharing in me, and I think that you're not hearing me, but that isn't necessarily the case. I'm just not conveying properly what I'm trying to convey, so I get mad and I go, I quit. Does that affect people since we're connected? Since I might be the kneecap, you know what I'm saying? And you take the kneecap off of the leg, the leg don't work. Do you see how crazy that is? All right, so we're going to move on here. Um, we're going to move on here to verse, uh, let me see here. We're going to move on here to verse, uh, I broke this down just a little bit. Okay, so I'm confused in my own notes, and I'll, let me share something that I'm learning with you before we get going a little bit further. As I'm learning that 
God's word is so deep, much deeper than we can even figure out. <laughs> um, there's people that read his word frontwards and backwards. And then they read it backwards, and then they place a numerical value on his original words, and those numerical values mean certain things. And like, <clears throat> so I've tried to work on some of this stuff. Not so much the numbers portion of it, because that's like way above my pay grade. But I read these passages, Galatians 5, 16 <clears throat> through 26, frontwards and backwards. And if you read them frontwards and backwards, they basically say the same thing. What's that word called? Like, uh, where the word is like something like palindrome. Is that what it's called? And I'm, unfortunately, the only one I could remember is red rum and murder, which is horrible. <laughs> I can't like, pick a different one to think of right now. Uh, a, a palindrome, you know, it means the same thing forwards as it does backwards. And so when I was reading these, I was reading it up and down, backwards and forwards. And I was catching the same things out of it. <clears throat> So uh, I, I, I skipped, uh, let me see here. I, I, for some reason, I have in my notes verse 18 and then 16. So I think I might have got confused when I was studying it and how I wrote it down, but actually I didn't because it says the same thing. So verse 18, it says, but if you are led by the Spirit, then you are not in subjection to the system that results from perverting the Torah into legalism. Um, so sin Sin here has taken something that originally had good intentions. These were originally in, in instructions on how we should and should not live that shows that we are separate or separated from the world systems and that we were God's children, okay? And sin has taken this and created a system that puts us in bondage when, it, when we operate his word through legalism, which is I have to do something. I have to, if I, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this in order to be saved. I got to do this to show that I'm good. I got to do this to show my love. I got to do this to show that I'm faithful. I got to do all this stuff. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy what sin has done. You know, and what's awesome is our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, come to set us free from sin and death. He came to set us free from that system. That system. So, uh, <clears throat> verse 16, it says, What I am saying is this, run your lives by the Spirit. That's what this Bible says. Run your lives by the Spirit. That caught me because I'd never read it like that before. In other versions, your Bible might say walk in the Spirit. Your Bible might say live according to the Spirit. But this one, in reading it, it says run your lives by the Spirit. And when I read that, it reminded me of when I was a kid, and my mom and my dad, they, they were, I was, you know, before it was all crazy, when it was really my mom and my dad and my family, you know, and I want to go to my friend's house. You know, you go to your friend's house so many times. Um, my daughter goes to her friend's house so many times that she doesn't always really have to ask anymore. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so she's just like, whoop, I'm going to my friend's. And I just begin to assume she's with her friend. You know what I'm saying? But at some point, she quits running that by dad. <laughs> and then dad goes, where's my daughter? And then daughter's not at friend's. And now daughter is in trouble because she didn't run that by your dad. And so when I read this, it says, run your lives by the Spirit. Then you will not do what your old sinful nature wants. And it caused me to slow down and think, run things by the Spirit. What? How do you run things by the Spirit? I mean, what is the Spirit? This, this is getting weird. This is getting crazy. Huh. So verse 16, what I'm saying is this, run your lives by the Spirit, then you will not do what your old sinful nature wants. If I run this by my dad, then I'm not going to do what my old sinful nature wants. Almost like my dad is smarter than me, get out of here. <laughs> uh, so here, here, here's another question I want you to think about. What is the Spirit that we are to run our lives by or walk in, or live according to. What is the Spirit here that we're talking about? Now, all of us, because we're so familiar with Christianese, we understand that that's the Holy Spirit. Okay, What exactly is the Holy Spirit? Funny, because Rod touched on it last week. It's in Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, tells you the seven spirits of God. So let's go over there real quick. Or you don't have to if you don't want to. I'll go there, and I'm going to read it. <clears throat> 
And I, I had to work on this one. This one locked me up for a little while. I still can't say that I fully get it. I was trying to figure it out. But I'll just read it to you real quick. Um, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. It says, The spirit of Adonai will rest on him, him being Jesus, but the spirit of Adonai will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of power, and the spirit of the knowledge of fearing Adonai, or fear, fear of the Lord. Okay? These are the seven spirits of our God, or the seven spirits that God functions through at any given time. Sometimes all of them, sometimes just one here, one there. There's certain areas in my life where I might need a little more knowledge or a little more understanding than a little bit of fear. You get what I'm saying? Like at any given time, he can... Um, at any given time, he can use whatever he likes. But when I, when I, <clears throat> I wanted to take note of verse 3, if you can also. In this Bible, it says, He will be inspired by fearing Adonai. As if to say that, that, that Jesus, Jesus' motivation is fearing God. And a healthy fear. Not, not, not like I'm scared that you're going to kill me. Well, I am scared that he could kill me. <laughs> But but in a in a in a in a awe, you know what I mean? Like a like a reverence, a reverent fear of who the Almighty is actually motivates him to flow and function in wisdom, understanding, counsel, power, might, knowledge. You understand? That is the spirit in which we are to live by. That is the spirit that we are to walk in. That is the spirit that we should have run things by. That is the spirit, spirits, <laughs> that we should filter our lives through. And when we filter our lives through that, when we filter our lives through that, then we, it isn't we no more. <laughs> have you heard, allow the spirit to flow through you? That's what he's talking about here, this selfish ambition when you live life by the Spirit, or when you walk in the Spirit, <laughs> you don't do your sinful nature no more. It, it kind of takes your doing off of the table completely. Um, verse 17, For that old nature wants what is contrary to the Spirit. The old nature. The old nature, the flesh. You know, what is it? I'm not even going to, my brain isn't working on the location about, you know, the old has passed away and the new has come. I want to say 2 Corinthians 5.17, but I might be wrong. <laughs> so, uh, for the old nature wants what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit wants to do what is contrary to the old nature or the flesh. These oppose each other so that you find yourselves unable to carry out your good intentions. So I am unable to carry out my good intentions. What are my good intentions? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, humility, gentleness. I can't do that. I can't even do that. I think I can. My brain tells me I can. My flesh tells me that I can do all of this stuff. But in reality, it isn't something that we do. It isn't something we can do. Isn't that insulting? Because I'm a good, strong man, and I can do everything, but not that. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to read this one more time how I wrote it. For the old nature wants what is contrary to the Spirit. That Spirit is wisdom, understanding, counsel, power, knowledge, and fear of the Lord. My flesh wants what is contrary to what the Spirit wants. Isn't that crazy? And the Spirit wants to do what is contrary to the flesh. My flesh wants to do it, because if I earn it, then I showed you all how amazing I am. It's pride. I had to repent for pride this week. It was horrible. It was great. Now it's great. But as we were going through it, it was horrible. And unforgiveness and bitterness, because these things just chain react. This firing happens. I know more than you. You don't understand me. I'm going to out-teach you. Um... 
because you don't understand me, I'm mad at you, I can't stand you, I don't want to be around you, now I hate you. It went from pride and arrogance to unforgiveness to bitterness. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm banging my head on a wall. Why isn't the Lord talking to me? And then he said, let me show you your heart. And it wrecked me all. Now, it is amazing. Now it's great. But as I was going through it, it is no fun. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? Because, I mean, the guy who's up here teaching should have it all together. We never have a problem ever. Ever. Life is grand. Peachy. <laughs> wow. So verse 18 through 23, we're going to drop down and focus on to that. I have got to stop. <laughs> uh, I keep turning the page off Galatians here, and then I don't remark it. All right. We're going to focus on verses 18 through 23. Uh, let me see here. We'll read it. I'll read it here. But if you are led by the Spirit, remember the Spirit we just talked about? The seven Spirits of God. But if you are led by the Spirit, then you are not in subjection to the system that results from perverting the Torah into legalism. When we're led by the Spirit, we don't get tricked into legalism. I'm trying to show that I can earn something, the developed pride and unforgiveness. Da -da 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 -da. 19. And it is perfectly evident what the old nature does. It expresses itself in sexual immorality, impurity, indecency, involvement with the occult, and with drugs. None of us struggle with none of that stuff, but here we go. It expresses itself in feuding, in fighting, in becoming jealous of one another. It expresses itself in getting angry, in selfish ambition, in factionalism. Factionalism is like, you know, me and my little group, we know more than you and your little group. Envy, intrigue, drunkenness, orgies, and these and things like these. I warn you now as I have warned you before. Those who do such things will have no such share in the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. Nothing in the Torah stands against such things. Nothing in the law stands against the fruit of the Spirit. You know what I'm saying? And the fruit of the Spirit doesn't stand against what's in the law. It doesn't. Sin does, and our selfishness does. But those two coincide, believe it or not, when they're done with the right heart. And that is in what our songs, amazing songs say, submission to Yeshua. To Jesus. Submission to Jesus. I have firsthand experience this week of having to submit to Jesus. I did not want to do it. But the end result was fruitful. Huh. The end result was fruitful. So, I wrote a couple things down. Fruit does not come from our efforts of legalistic observances. It only grows naturally. Can any of you make the apple grow any bigger? No. We can't. It does it on its own, minus the miracle growth, GMO, weirdos. <laughs> uh, we know that Jesus said in Matthew 12, 33, that his tree is known by its fruit. You know the test we took, and then we had our friends take it? We are known by what our friends perceive us to be, not by what we think we are. Isn't that wild? <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is a spontaneous work of the Holy Spirit inside of us. The Spirit produces characteristic traits that are found in the nature of Christ. They are but the byproduct of the Holy Spirit's control of our lives. The fruits of the Spirit are only a byproduct of allowing the Spirit to flow through us. We cannot obtain fruit of the Spirit by doing, earning, or even trying. Wrap your head around that. Me, God, wrap my head around that. I cannot earn nothing. I can't earn salvation? Dang, that sucks. I can't earn this fruit of the Spirit? Man, that sucks too. 
All I can do is live a life of submission. And that sucks too. I shouldn't say that word, not in church. Lord, please forgive me. And it doesn't really, it, it seems hard because my flesh wants to be in control. But when I really submit, the fruitfulness is amazing. So if we want these fruits of the Spirit to grow inside of us, we must join our lives to His. John 15, 4 says, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot bear fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful apart from me. Hmm. We must know Him. We must love Him. We must remember Him. We must imitate Him. As a result, we will fulfill the intended purpose of the law and the Torah, which was and still is to love God and love our neighbor. Are you tracking with me? Because our Father who sent the law also sent the Spirit the byproducts of the Spirit-filled life are in perfect harmony with the intent of God's law. A person who exhibits the fruit of the Spirit fulfills the law far better than the person who observes the rituals but has little love in his or her heart. <laughs> Think about that. I've spent an hour this morning thinking about just those last couple of statements because it... It goes against my own theology of do good, get good. Do bad, get bad. You know, the society that we live in. Obey, and you get your freedom. Which is turning into a legalistic perversion of freedom. That's not how the Lord works. Can you see within our own time frame, within our own government, how sin is perverting the system? Obedience, and you have your freedom. Now, I can say the same thing about Christ. Obedience to Christ, and you have your freedom. But they have two totally different meanings. Do they not? Ah, I'm going to read verses 24 through 26. Moreover, those who belong to the Messiah Yeshua, have put their old nature to death on the stake along with its passions and its desires. Since it is through the Spirit that we have life, let it also be through the Spirit that we order our lives day by day. Let us not become conceited, provoking each other. And we're going to circle back around to one of the first questions that we asked. How do we be more fruitful in the areas where we need growth. You remember? How do we be fruitful? The answer is in verse 25. Since it is through the Spirit that we have life, let it also be through the Spirit that we order our lives daily. If we run our lives daily, as what we call being led by the Spirit, or the Spirit flowing through us, or running it by the Spirit, as the many different versions translate, but if we run it by our Father, it'll give us life and it'll produce the fruit that He's looking for. Because ultimately, the fruit that He's growing is the fruit that He's looking for. That's another hard pill for me to swallow. Because I want to master all of them. And He probably wants us to master all of them. But right now, He's working on this one. And the only way that this one is going to grow is if I stick it out. If I stick it out and I stay in the battle, if I stay in the fight, <laughs> I lost my things. Because I can tell you, you don't just love good by loving good. You get the opportunity to love good. And a lot of times I fail at it. Same thing with all of them. I don't, he doesn't just sprinkle the little joy dust on my head. I get the opportunity to be joyful in a difficult circumstance. And in submitting to the difficult circumstance, he produces the growth. I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> Self-control. Some versions uh, 
You know, this, this version says faithfulness. Other versions say long-suffering. Woohoo! All about that long-suffering. <laughs> Not exactly, but he's a good father and he knows what he's doing. Do we really sincerely trust him? Uh, also, the answer, so the, one, the answer was found in verse 25, and then also the answer is found in verse 16. What I am saying to you is this, run your lives by the Spirit, then you will not do what your old nature wants to do. So if you take this and read this forwards and backwards from 16 to 26, it gives you the answer, it, it gives you the problem, it gives you the answer, it tells you what is going on, it tells you how sin twisted the original intent, it tells you what the original intent is, how to get back to the original intent, and how to stop fighting with your brothers and sisters. Two times it makes reference to fighting with your brothers and sisters. Two times. Two times it gives you the answer. Run your life through the Spirit. Live according to the Spirit. How do we live according to the Spirit? What Spirit are we living according to? Wisdom, knowledge, power, fear of the Lord. If we can live our lives, if we could switch that lens just Whoop, take the lens of Scott off and lay it over here and pick up the lens of the seven spirits of the Father, I will be amazingly fruitful. That's hard. Because I was created to live in Mystery Babylon where I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, with no consequence. And the Lord goes, mm, not exactly. That's cool. But we're going to be in my kingdom and you're going to do things the way I want them done. In a gentle way. <laughs> in a gentle way. Which is awesome. So, uh, we have to order our lives daily. You know, didn't, didn't Jesus say, pick up your cross daily and follow me? Daily. That is something I'm still working on. I was hoping I could just pick it up on Monday and that would work through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But it isn't exactly how it works. I got to pick that thing up every single day. Every single day and some days I just don't feel like it. I just don't feel like it. I'm going to do it my way. And then my way turns into a nightmare. Oh, man. So we have to order our lives daily through the filter of the Spirit of Yahweh, or what we call God, yud heh vav -Hey, Yeshua, Jesus, Adonai. We have to order our lives daily through the filter of the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit of power and might, the Spirit of knowledge, and the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. We do all of these things because we are all struck with his majesty. We are all struck with his kingdom. And that is what motivates me. How a loving father could love unconditionally me. How could a loving father love unconditionally you? That is the awe. That is the majesty. That is the splendor of his never-ending love. It is. I mean, nobody knows me like me. I scored myself twos, threes, fours. Nathan scored me seven, eight, and nines. How's that work? We know our hearts. The word of the Lord says our hearts are not good. Not good. <laughs> and uh, He's given us grace. He's given us a way. And that way is through Jesus Christ. He's given us a way to be transformed into his image. <laughs> he says, he says that I am his righteousness. That's a hard pill for me to swallow. And then he gives me the time, the opportunity, and the grace to allow him to develop his righteousness in and through me. He speaks what I am, even though I am not that yet. Can we see ourselves through those eyes? Can we see ourselves through those lenses? It's difficult. It's difficult. All right. So since we're talking about fruit, I'm going to finish on this. I'm going to finish on Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. It says, How blessed are those who reject the advice of the wicked. Don't stand on the way of sinners or sit where scoffers sit. I got a problem with that. I'm always trying to get in the way of the sinner. Don't do that, man. You're better than that. <laughs> is that really my job? I mean, it kind of is. 
So much of walking with the Lord is so tricky. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 would, I, would, I would stop my son and my daughter from doing something ridiculous in a heartbeat. But am I getting in the way of the Lord? Because maybe he needs them to make that mistake so he can teach them something. Oh, ouch. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's up? I, 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 I love them. I don't want them to suffer. And he goes, let them suffer. They got to figure this out on their own. I'm like, oh, that ain't like, don't sound like being a good dad. Let them suffer? <laughs> uh, number two, their delight is in Adonai's Torah. On his Torah, they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams. They bear their fruit in season. Their leaves never wither, and everything they do succeeds. When we submit to God the Father, His ways, His plans, His purposes, we bear fruit in all seasons. <laughs> oh. So with that being said, maybe, maybe somebody in here doesn't know who we're talking about. Maybe somebody doesn't have any grid for this spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, counsel. Maybe somebody doesn't even have the grid for these fruits of the Spirit. If that's the case, the Lord wants to meet you because his plan is not for us to suffer. He came to give us life and give us life more abundantly. You know, the enemy comes to kill and to steal and to destroy. He steals our joy. He steals our relationships. He steals so much. And that is not the life that God has for you. If you don't know this God that we're talking about, He wants to meet you today. And I, and I look even in here and I think most of the people in here know the Lord, but who am I to say if they do or if they don't? <laughs> and there may be people that are watching this online that don't know the Lord. And so uh, if you don't know the Lord, I just want to tell you that He loves you. That He gave His only begotten Son for you. For you individually. He gave everything. He just wants to meet with you. He wants to love you, lavish his love upon you. He wants to transform the way that it is right now into the way that it could be, and it's glorious. It's amazing. So, if you guys could just close your eyes for a minute, and we'll just ask the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you sent your Son to die for us. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you sent him to pay the penalty for our sins. And Lord, we just apply that blood of Jesus to our lives. Lord, we confess our sin before you. And, and, and we know that we need a Savior. That, that death is on the backside of sin. And that penalty has to be paid, Lord. We thank you that Jesus has paid that penalty. Lord, we need you. We love you. We want you. We ask that you would come and do a work in our lives and our hearts. We thank you for never giving up on us. We thank you for loving us unconditionally. Lord, I ask that you would help us to be a blessing to this world, to this community. Lord, help us to make your name great. Help us to represent you well. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.